Hello, and welcome to another Grams tutorial. In this video, I'm going to show you how to create a birthday and anniversary report with Grams genealogical software version 5.1.5. .5. If you're looking for a way to keep track of your family's birthdays and anniversaries, this is the video for you. And it's also a lot of fun to create. So let's pull up Gramps and get started. The first thing that I want to do is click on reports in the top menu bar go down to text reports and then select birthday and anniversary report. All right, so we're gonna see a menu similar to the last report that we did if you watched my last video. And it's going to give us a series of options on how to format the report as well as what things to include in our report. So the first tab that we see are the report options. And the first option that we have is the filter. So the filter is going to determine what people are included in our report that we create. And currently I have selected entire database. So this means everybody in the entire family tree will be added to this report, given that they have a date put in for a birthday, an anniversary, or a death date. Okay, we can also narrow this down by uh, selecting one of the other options and it revolves around what person is currently selected as our center active person in our database. So the first person in my database was Adam Wallace. So he's always the first active person. Um, whoever you entered first probably will be your active person. It might be yourself because that would be a great place to start. But if not, you can always change it. So. Um, there's various options here about what we're going to filter our report to. So we can choose the descendants of our center person. We can choose descendant families of our center person. We can choose the ancestors of our center person. Or we can choose people with common ancestors with our center person. Okay, so first of all, let's choose one of these that we want. And then we can actually select a center person if that's not the one that you actually want. Okay, so for example, let's say I would like to see the birth and anniversary and death records for all of the um, descendants of Adam Wallace. Okay, so our filter person then shows who we currently have selected once we choose the filter above. If we don't want that person, we can then click on the icon and if we need to see all the people, we can click on the show all checkbox and we can actually change who we're looking at in our family tree. So if I didn't want Adam Wallace, I could make a different selection, but I do actually want Adam Wallace. I will just select that person, click OK, and it will change the filter and the filter person. Okay. Now, the title text, text area one, two, and three, these are just uh, things that are going to show up at the very top of our page of our report. So you can change, you know, and put whatever you want. Maybe it's not going to be anniversaries. Maybe it's not going to be birthdays. Maybe it's a death report. Maybe you want to include who it was prepared by or the date it was prepared, anything like that. Like that's all up to you. You can change any of those text areas. Okay. And you'll see how they print out on the report that I create in just a minute or two. All right, so tab number two, the report options. Okay, so we get a few more uh, ways to report our data. The name format, for example. So just like the other report we saw earlier, this one just gives us alternative ways to list someone's name. Maybe we don't want the surname first. Maybe we want the given and then the surname. Maybe we just want the given name. You know, there's other options here, or you can just choose the default that your program is currently uh, always, you know, displaying. It's up to you. I'm going to leave it at what it was before. So surname and then the given name and then a suffix if there is one. Okay. Now under that, we can choose whether or not to include data marked as private. Now we have not demonstrated how to mark data as private in these videos yet, but if you figured that out on your own, you can choose whether or not to include those people or that data in your report that you create. So if you don't want the data, you uncheck the box. If you want to include it, go ahead and leave it checked. Okay, well you can also underneath that include only living people. So perhaps you want a calendar 
where you actually are going to use it to remind yourself of you know people's birthdays and anniversaries because you want to send them a card or give them a phone call or you know wish them a happy birthday online if you've got thousands of people in your family tree you probably don't want to list all of the dead people in your birthday report um, so in that case you might want to include only living people um, but just keep in mind if you don't have any living people in your family tree and you select this you're not going to get a report with any people listed at all. So in my case, I need to leave it blank because I have not entered any living people in my family tree. Now the next box here is called the dead symbol. And this is actually what is going to indicate to you on your report when a person has died. So it will show after the name to indicate that that person is no longer alive. And you'll see what uh, that looks like in a second when my report prints out because um, no one actually is alive on my report um, but you'll see what it looks like in my uh, upcoming report here uh, the next thing is translation so you can choose um, either the default or this would be whatever you chose when you installed Gramps if you chose extra translations um, those would be available to you here since I'm in USA I'll just stick with USA English and then the option down here, show event year. So in addition to showing what birthday or anniversary it is, if you leave this box checked, it'll actually show you what year the first time it happened was. So if you, for example, want to see what year everybody was born or something like that, leave that box checked and you will also see the years in your report. Okay, now the next tab here is called content. All right, and this is going to change the, the dates that are displayed on your report. And by dates, I don't mean, you know, April, May, June. It's going to be what anniversary it is. Okay, so I could print out 2023's report. It'll show everybody's age in the year 2023. I could print out 2024. It's going to bump everybody's year up by one because it would be the next year birthday, the next anniversary, that type of thing. Okay, so you can change this to be whatever you want. If the birthdays are not quite coming out the way they should, you might want to check to make sure that the year of this report is the correct year because it will affect everybody's date that is displayed on there. So just keep that in mind if you print out a report and it's not quite the years that you think they should be. Uh, so country for holidays, if you want to show holidays, um, you know, like national holidays, you can choose a country here. If you don't want to show the, um, holidays, you choose the top left that's blank. All right. And that will actually remove any holidays listed on your calendar that you're going to print out here. All right. The next option, birthday surname. So this is actually just for the wives that are listed. And it's going to give you three options, either use the wife with the husband's surname from their first marriage, use it from their last marriage, or use the surname that they were given at birth. I'm going to use the one that was at birth just because it makes things a little less confusing for me. But it would make sense if you're printing out just a living birthday, you know, report that you might want to just see their last marriage, um surname just because that's what you would probably refer to them now as anyway so all right so we have options here on what to include okay and these are probably checked a little bit differently for you this was um saved from the last time i ran this report probably so all right the first checkbox is include birthdays so if you want to see everybody's birthday check that box second box is anniversaries if you want to see family anniversaries so marriages you check this box. However, I do want to offer a disclaimer. If you want to see just marriage anniversaries, you're going to have to change how you enter the information into your family tree because this is going to show any anniversary in your family group as an event. So you'll see in a minute that if you've watched previous videos of mine, I walked you through how to enter marriage license as well as the actual marriage ceremony date right so i had two different dates on the marriage certificate one was for the license to be wed and then the other one was the actual marriage um certificate 
they're both going to show up in the anniversary. And I'm not sure if that's a coding error on Gramps' part that, you know, it's not quite filtering the way it should, or if it's just a feature that I just have not quite interpreted correctly. Um, you know, not sure how that's coded in. I'm not sure if it's supposed to be like that, but just fair warning, if you want to see just marriage anniversaries, don't put anything else in your family events. And I'll show you what I mean by that once we print out our report. All right, you can also choose to include death anniversaries. Check the box if you want to see that. Again, you can just check one if you want. So if you want to create a report that just shows death anniversaries, just check that box there and take the rest of them off. Um, you can also, the last box here is include the relationship to the center person. So if we go back to the report options, we saw that we are having just the descendants of Adam Wallace. He is our filter person. So if I want to see what everyone's relationship is to Adam, I check that box and it's going to give me a little um, piece of text that says whether it's a son or a daughter or a grandson, which is kind of cool if you're looking at, you know, especially living, if you've got you know, tons of relatives and you kind of forget how you're related to them, but you've got them on your report, you might want to do that because it'll show you how they're related to you. Um, all right, so the very first tab, paper options, I'm not going to spend much time on this at all. If you want to print on different sizes of paper, you can change these options here. Down below, we've got the output format. I always like to do a PDF just because I can save it, but if I wanted to print it directly, if I wanted to turn it into an HTML document, if I wanted to use any of these other options here, you have that ability. I'm gonna leave it as a PDF just so that you can see it. Um, the checkbox here, open with default viewer, just means that once it's created, it's going to open with the default viewer for viewing whatever type of output format you selected. So for me, it's gonna be my default PDF viewer. Underneath that is file name. So this is just showing where it's gonna be saved and what the name of the file is going to be. If you want to change the name of your file, you'll just change the text right before the period and the file extension. So in my case, mine's a PDF, so it's .pdf. So if I want to change what the name of my file is, I would just change the text right here before the slash um, where it's showing the location. So <clears throat> this is where it's gonna save itself. If I want to change the file location, I would just click on this little icon to the right and you can choose a new folder. But I'm gonna leave it on my desktop just so that I can find it quickly and do stuff with it. All right, birthday report's fine. Um, it really doesn't matter to me because I'm just gonna delete this after I um, show this example. Style, again, will um, let you change the font and the text size and the font colors if you want to kind of add some flair to your document. Maybe you would prefer everybody's birthday to be in red or something like that. You can do that. You just click on style editor. You create a new style by clicking on the plus and then you can work through all of these different uh, styles that they offer you and just work through the font options, paragraph options. Obviously just change one thing at a time, run the report. If you like the way it looks, continue. If you don't like the way it reports out, you know, go back and change it to something you do like. If you completely mess everything up and you don't know how to get back, you can just choose style default and that will give you the default gramp style that you cannot change. So it'll just be all black and white, right? So that is all there is as far as creating this report. So let's go ahead and select OK and we'll see what it spits out. All right, so here is our report. And remember, we chose Adam Wallace and we wanted just his descendants. So this is relationship shown are to Adam Wallace um, as being our center person. <clears throat> okay, so the first event here was August 22nd. It shows that his daughter Sarah was born and it also gives the year 1835. It shows currently in 2023, her this is her 188th birthday on August 22nd. So happy birthday, Sarah. Um, October 9th, we see is George Edward Sr. Hoffman. Um, so he was born in 1862. He is deceased, so we see this cross icon. We also see that this would be his 161st birthday and it shows his relationship to Adam as being his grandson. We also see here, um, October 22nd, 
Okay, so we saw Sarah up here, it had an asterisk. Now we see down here, it's got a cross. So this is actually Sarah Wallace's death anniversary, October 22nd of 1908. And in 2023, this would be her 115th anniversary of her death. All right, we also see here a birth event for George Hoffman Jr., which is Adam Wallace's great-grandson. In 1907, he was going to be 116 years old. But as you can see, he is deceased because he's got a cross next to his name. Okay, now there's one thing that this didn't show. This did not show any anniversaries, and that's just because I don't have any coded in here. That would be in relation to just Adam and his descendants. However, <clears throat> let's go ahead and change this report. So we'll run a new one so you can see the difference. Okay, so if I chose the descendant families of Adam Wallace, so that should show me a couple more anniversary things because it would show not only um, his children, as well as their spouses. So I'm going to overwrite here because I don't care to save the other one. All right, so <clears throat> now what we see are, um, right, so Sarah Wallace is Adam Wallace's daughter. So here we get an event now, August 9th, which is Sarah Wallace and Isaac Hoffman. It shows two little circles intertwined. For me, I would think that would be a marriage event, right? Two wedding rings combined. I think what Gramps is actually trying to use that icon as is being a family event because underneath then we also get August 11th and it shows the exact same event. Uh, 1859, Sarah and Isaac, 164th anniversary of something. It doesn't actually even tell us what the anniversary is of. Okay, The rest here is all the same because they're all still descendants. So let's go investigate what happened here in August of 1859 between Sarah and Isaac. Okay, so if we go back into our family tree, we'll go to our families. All right, Isaac and Sarah Wallace, they're already selected. Under events. Okay, so there's what it is. The marriage license was set as an event on the 9th of August. The marriage itself was the 11th of August. So if you've watched previous videos of mine, we went through and looked at the document itself and entered all of the information that we could gather from that uh, document into our family tree so that nothing was left behind. But the problem is, is that anytime we enter an event in our family editor, so if I open up Isaac and Sarah here and I go to events, all right, so we entered these two events here. Anything that we enter into the family editor is going to show up on our anniversary report and it's not going to specify what type of anniversary that is and that's why I don't really like using the anniversary report because I like to put more information than just marriages in my family event section okay so let me give you an example here let's create a new event and we're just gonna make something kind of goofy here let's do um, uh, let's see let's do a uh, let's find all right, academic, we'll do graduation. Okay, so the family graduated from what? I don't know. And we'll do, let's see, so they were married in 1859. So we'll do 1st of January, and we'll put the date as 1900. We'll put the description as graduation. Say okay. All right, so we've got a graduation event now in our family. I'm going to delete this after we run this report. I, this is just for um, demonstration. All right, so we'll say okay and we'll close this. This time I'm actually going to run the report as a full family tree report just so you can see the difference. All right, so we go to text reports, birthday, anniversary. Instead of choosing Adam or anything like that, I'm just going to do entire database. So we should see a few more. Uh, events in here as well. Click OK. I'm going to overwrite because I don't care that I saved the one I just ran. All right. So this one is actually, and I forgot to um, take off this checkbox here that says relationships, but that should be OK because we didn't choose descendants. So if there is no relationship to Adam, it should just leave it blank. But all right. So here you can see January 1st, 1900, Sarah Wallace and Isaac Hoffman. 123rd anniversary of something, right? So this was their uh, graduation is what we just created, but it doesn't indicate that. 
And I really don't like that Gramps is putting every single event down that I put in my family group. It really should just be, you know, marriage anniversaries or else they should give us the option to select, you know, what type of anniversaries would you like to show? Because we got to choose whether or not we wanted to show births. We can choose whether or not to show deaths, but we really can't choose what type of anniversaries we're showing. So either in your family events, you should just put marriage anniversaries if that's what you want to do for these reports, because there's no other way that I know of easily to just run marriage reports. Um, I suppose you could always just filter out all the marriages. I mean, that would work, but um, if you want a report that includes birthdays and death dates, I don't know that there's another report that'll do that right now. Um, but anyways, if we look down here, all right, so they're still listed here. Um, and then we've also got, now we've got some other ones too. So you can see here we've got uh, Julius Hoffman and Mary Elizabeth Smart. Here's their wedding anniversary. And this is the only event that's listed because that's the only event that I entered into their family um, group events. Just to show that, you know, it can be done. It's just you've got to remember that when you're entering events in your family tree that you don't start adding more than marriages in the family event. Otherwise, you're going to not be able to correctly use this report. That's the end of this video. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you found it helpful. If you did, please like and subscribe to my channel so you can see when new content is released. If you're interested in learning more about Gramps, I recommend checking out my other videos, which go into detail on how to use Gramps to create and modify your own family tree for free and learn more about your own family history. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you real soon.